Oh, stop that. <laughs> She's reading my diary, shopping in the bop shop. This is like, this is such a mess. Oh, what a trashy breakdown. Oh, I love it. <gasps> no way. I feel like they're the kings and queens of messiness. Did I miss a course? A good quality white bread, like the expensive type. Hey Eurovision fans, the 18 songs for Melody Grand Prix, Norway's national final, have been released. We're gonna listen and react to all 18 songs, semi-final by semi-final, to see which ones could qualify from each semi, and is there a potential Eurovision winner amongst them. And make sure you stick around for the end of the video where I'm gonna give you my top 10 before and after editing. We'll look at the community top 10, and then I'll give you my final analysis. So, uh, let's keep going. If you're new here, welcome, my name is Tom. I'm an Irish Eurovision analyst and you can find all of this stuff on my Eurovision channel. So as you may know, I am a gigantic fan of Melody Grand Prix, the Norwegian national final. It's one of my favorite national finals that I watch every single year. One of my main sources of downloads as well. I really enjoy the music in it. I always get five, six downloads, unless it's a little bit of a shaky year. And often the Norwegian songs are in my top 10 at the end of the year as well. So really, really excited to see what they've got. This is my Christmas, getting all the Melody Grand Prix songs. This year we have three semi-finals of six songs and three songs will qualify from each of the semi-finals so we'll have a nine song final. Is there a wild card? Sometimes they do do a wild card actually. There's nothing on Wikipedia saying there's a wild card but I would guess they're gonna do that because they like to have like a second chance round and then maybe there'll be 10 in the final but that's just total speculation. In any case, we're gonna go through this semi-final by semi-final because then at the end of each one we can talk about which are the three of those six songs which could qualify. I'm gonna to have to alter the audio a little bit to make sure that it complies with copyright. But as always, if you wanna see the original audio, I'll upload that video onto my Patreon. Okay, so let's go to semi-final number one. And I've kind of seeded these myself uh, based off of vibe. I did a vibe check. First song we're going to, I wanted to start with something kind of fun. So I've picked a song called Woman Show by Mathild SPZ featuring Chris Archer and Slam Dunk. <laughs> so <laughs> they've got a pretty naff looking thumbnail, but uh, Woman Show sounds like an interesting title. And actually one of the songwriters on this is Emmy who did Witch Woods a couple of years ago. Okay, so a little bit excited for this. Mathild SPZ won a number secret bang. Ooh. Yes, I chose a good song to start with. Oh, it's gonna be proper trashy uns uns beats. I love it. Oh, oh no, drum and bass already? <laughs> oh God. Oh, this is just like them throwing everything at the wall. I think the pop top's gonna be pretty epic. Oh uh, yeah, that's proper messy. Is it a good type of messy or not? I like that clapping coming actually. I am a woman show, <laughs> what does that mean? And then they're saying something in Norwegian. It's got like a real, it sounds a little bit like Eko Hofgold from Norway. That kind of like, I don't know what the, I forget the name of that. Is it dance music or something? That German music from Ika? Oh, a bit of rap in Norwegian, I like that. Yeah, it's giving me, it's not sounding like the most expensive song in the world. I'm getting kind of like, it's a bit trashy, but I like trashy songs, so. I'm obsessed, what is this metaphor? I'm a woman show. Oh. Oh yes. Oh, what a trashy breakdown. Oh, I love it. Oh, that guitar is just <laughs> straight out of the 70s. This is this is the good type of mess. This is like, this is such a mess. <laughs> right? uh, it's very endearing. The drum and bass as well, threatening to come in. I don't know. I don't know how you can't get a bop onto this. It's just... It, this is guilty pleasure. Like this is in the dictionary. Guilty pleasure. The woman. What? Not the woman show. Woman show. I actually quite like when the guys come in. Ooh, she's doing a little bit of ad libs as well. Again, this is just throwing everything at the wall. So why not throw in some ad libs? Okay, I enjoyed that. 
<laughs> Maybe that's just because I'm a bad person, but uh, that was that was very enjoyable for me. I want that to qualify. Look, I'm not saying that's a good song, but it's and that was entertaining. There were so many things going on, and sometimes when loads of stuff is going on, you're just like, okay, this is just so cacophonous. That was edited enough that I was able to sit through it and not feel stressed. It was just like chaos going on around me in a pleasant way. Okay. I'm, I guess that the next song is gonna be a little bit slower. It's Frederick Holland saying Stranded. So I'm guessing, I'm trying to pace, put the songs like a beat slower, etc. So I'm guessing from the fact he's sitting in a corner that probably this is sad, sad boy song. So wanna know my secret bang? He may surprise me, maybe this is another techno bop about a man show, who knows? I didn't see Moreland this year in any of the songwriters, which I'm sad about. Mm. First 30 seconds has given me generic sad boy. But it's pretty. I think I'm, he's going to have to have a hook in the chorus. Well, Evan has to have a hook in the chorus. It's kind of, it's kind of obvious. Okay, that was nice. I feel like I need like a lighter. Okay, he's really walking the line into X Factor song. Okay, the piano coming in was predictable, but still necessary. Yeah, I do like. I do often like these type of songs. Oh, I'm not hearing enough magic here. What can he do staging wise as well to elevate this? Like it's gonna be him standing on his own. Oh, a new guitar just came in. Like it's well constructed and it's well done, it's just not particularly groundbreaking in any way. And not everybody needs to break the ground, but mm, I think if you're not going to be groundbreaking, you should have a strong melody. This isn't bad, I'm just, mm, I have high expectations for Melody Grand Prix, let's be real. Okay, picking up a bit of pace towards the end now. Like, I don't hate this, I think it's pleasant, but it's just very inoffensive. It's very um, white bread. It's like good quality white bread, like the expensive type. Yeah, mm, it's fine. I have to, it's, it's hard for me now because I do need to have like a bit more context of who else is in the covers. Because I might come back and actually say that was a really nice ballad when I see all the other ballads that it's up against. But at this point in time, I'm kind of thinking, I'd be surprised if that was a contender. It just felt a little lacking in POW. Uh, and ballads can have POW, they really can. Obviously, Arcade had a lot of POW. Okay, next up we've got Myra, and her heart is on fire. Poor Myra only has eight subscribers, so go to her channel and subscribe. And her heart's on fire. She looks very happy about it, though. Wanna know my secret bang? Ooh. Maybe she is happy her heart's on fire. Maybe she's like, my heart's on fire, like I'm spicy. Oh. Oh. I thought she was gonna rap. The wicked thing you said she was a rapper. Yeah, it says Norwegian rapper, Regina Tucker. Oh. I'm a little disappointed. I thought we were gonna get a rap, like something a bit edgier. This sounds very Rayleigh. Uh, yeah. Maybe she's gonna rap halfway through. I hope she does. Unless this Wikipedia page is just deceiving me. Uh, it's fun, it's got a carefreeness, it's got a boppy. Um, it's that kind of generic 80s Dua Lipa sound that we get a lot recently. Okay, pop drop. It's very 80s album filler, kind of B-side. I love you, my heart's on fire. Yeah, mm, it's not moving me. Oh, I need to make my list as I go along, don't I? I'm, yeah, I'm just kind of disappointed because I was just hoping this would be something edgy. I thought this semi-final was like a lot of different types of songs. Like, I don't know, lyrically as well, nothing is new about this. I love you, my heart's on fire. Giving me nothing. And then a key change. Oh, ah. Oh. Nah. 
I wish she was a, is she let me have a look I don't know her back catalog but like her her Wikipedia page it literally says Myra rapper so and it, her genre is hip hop and R&B and this is like super generic pop so it's like why is she doing a song that's so off brand for her okay look I know I was fixated on the fact that it was I was expecting a rap song I didn't get it I think Regardless of that, that was just a very generic song. I'm not saying it's bad, but like, what is a generic song like that gonna do in a national final or in Eurovision? Nothing. I'm just a little bit disappointed because she is able to rap, which is something that's really difficult to do. It's really difficult to do it well. Uh, so why didn't they just throw in a little bit of rap there? Like throw it in in the breakdown or just bring a bit more for, again, I don't know who she is. This is the first time I've ever heard of her, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basing this off the Wikipedia page. Unless the Wikipedia page is just trolling me or I've got the wrong uh, Myra for some reason. But the, the Wikipedia page just says that she's competing in Melody Grand Prix, so. Next up, we've got Goth Minister, We Come Alive. Now there's a music video. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show it or not. Goth Minister, one on my secret bank. Ooh, it's in Norwegian, I like that. Viet is, I think it means we are. Ooh, ooh, really kind of like epic 70s sound. Oh, that's kind of scary. The video is very ghoulish. Ooh, oh. Okay, I'm on board totally so far. Oh, it's got that real epic feel to it. Like Europe from the, were Europe in the 70s? Like the final countdown. Okay, so the story of the video is like the, this ghoulish dinner party. Come on, I'm actually really rooting for them. I would love this to be amazing. So far, I'm really bored. I just want that. Just have a good pop drop, please. Ooh, did I miss a chorus? I think I missed a chorus. <laughs> I'm still enjoying it, but I thought there was going to be a chorus at some point. Ooh, I turned the volume up. It's great production in this. We Live Under Your Bed is a slightly dodgy lyric. Yeah, the lyrics are over, uh, like maybe a little bit predatory. Ooh, creepy child. It feels like a steady journey, like I'm not getting super highs and lows. Oh, is there a dead body in the food? I think their stage is gonna be really cool. I think they're gonna have some like vibrant, exciting ideas. Very Halloween-y music video. Yeah, I really like this. I like this energy. Oh, they're eating each other. <laughs> Nobody's looking particularly urgent about the fact they're all being murdered. Yeah, this is the most casual dying people I've seen in my life. Okay, so it's a vampire theme. I love the concept of this. I'm missing more peaks and troughs. So concept is awesome, but... Like, I want cleaner delineation between verses and chorus there. It just felt like this real steady, like, even when I, was, I missed the chorus every single time, like, where was the chorus? Where was the bit where I'm like, okay, this is your hook. I still really liked it. It was really cool, interesting. It gave me a different decade vibe. It gave me a kind of rocky, epic feel. Um, so I'm really rooting for them, and I still really like that, but I would like it to have a little bit of a revamp. I want pow, relax, pow, relax, pow, relax. I don't want... Relax, 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 relax for the whole song. Unless it's like a bossa nova song from Portugal. That and Woman Show, what an eclectic semi-final. This is like just completely different people hanging out in a room together. Next up, I think we've got another sad song, Aya by Ingrid Yasmin. She's got a Norwegian Wikipedia page. So she does flamenco and Norwegian folk music and pop music. Wow, okay, I hope she brings those and I'm not getting deceived by another Wikipedia article. Wanna know my secret bank? Oh yes, Pixie Pop, yes please. Oh yeah, oh I love Norwegian Norse songs. Ooh, oh yes bitch, oh yes. Messy folk songs, I'm all for it. Okay, she started great, don't mess it up, have a chorus. That sounds like a little bit didgeridoo to me, like from Australia. I'm sure it's some Norwegian ancient instrument. <gasps> yes, 
Oh, what a gorgeous change-up that was. Oh, yes. Oh, bitch. Oh, stop. Oh, stop it. This is this is right up my alley. Oh, no. No one else is going to like this part from me. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh, and that Turkish dum dum. Oh. She's reading my diary. She's gone into my diary and she's seen my wish list and she's turned it into a Norwegian Turkish ethnic tickly bop. Like, no one else is gonna like this, but for me, <laughs> this isn't gonna qualify. This is a Tom thing. Ooh, ooh, okay, less of the didgeridoo. Less of that. Ooh, I think we're getting a dance break. Yes, dance break. Dance break. This is me doing it. <laughs> this is such a dance break. That was so blatant. Okay, I still really like it. But that was the most unsubtle insertion of a dance break in a song ever. Ooh. Okay, lots a tiny bit of steam now. I still really like this. I'm gonna download this. Wow, okay. I'm gonna be real with you now. We've had five songs. I would probably download three of them. This is why I love Melody Grand Prix. Just the production, the style for me is really the type of music I enjoy. Um, so I'm on a pretty good streak right now. I'm pretty happy. Uh, where would I put that? It's really hard to compare Goth Minister and Ingrid, Yasmin and Mathilde because those three songs have nothing in common apart from the fact that they're all songs in MGP. That's the only thread they have. Okay, the final song is Margaret Berger. Now I properly gasp when I saw this. I was walking down the street. I looked at my phone. I looked at the names for MGP this year and I saw her name in the first time I was like <gasps> I can't believe it it's really really unexpected in case you don't know she represented in 2013 she came fourth place I feed you my love fantastic song really cool staging kind of dark pop feel so I'm kind of surprised she's coming back I know she did an interview with Alicia Michelle recently I wonder was that because she was thinking about coming back or was she inspired by Alicia I'm not sure but hopefully she's coming back with something as strong or stronger than feed you my love want to know my secret bang Ooh, okay, it's kind of edgy. Kind of edgy, dark. Oblivion. Hmm. We have a song called Oblivion in East Lao as well. Ooh, I like that little switch up in her vocals there. That's cute. I like that. That beat sounds really reminiscent to me. I can't think what though. I got a bit of a bop on. Is it the love she's been looking for? I'm not sure. I don't know, Margaret. We're gonna find out in the course, hopefully. Answer to all these questions. Pop drop. Please be good, please be good. Ooh, ooh, yes, that's good. Ooh, yes, that's nice, I like that. Yeah, already downloading this. I don't know if it's like super pow wow, but it's downloadable. It does still have that kind of like dark feel that I Feed You My Love had. This kind of like desperate, sultry pop. That's in a lot of her music. She has another song called Samantha, which you need to check out. Very good song. Probably my favorite song of hers, actually. I don't know if I feel much of a difference in the second verse. I feel like the production is largely the same. Okay, let's go to our second pop drop. Yeah, that's a lovely transition into the chorus. And the, yeah, lovely. I really love those harmonies, very pretty. She's a great performer as well. She's gonna be confident as well because she's got that extra maturity and experience. Yeah, lovely. I hope she brings the dark staging as well. We're getting a bit with these like leather gloves in the picture. I hope she's gonna bring us something a bit like weird and edgy. Easy hook, I've got it already. Very easy to process. Yeah, that's really lovely. Mm. Okay, wow. Really, 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 really great. This semi-final is so strong. I'm hoping now that all the semi-finals are spread out. But before I take a break, let's go through that first semi-final. So those six are, songs are all competing against each other. This feels like a really, really high quality 
semi-final and we had that last year where the third semi-final was crazy strong i had like most of my favorite songs in it and then the first semi-final was a little bit weaker and that was the one that alessandra was in and she won she was actually the very first performance so definitely a song from the first semi-final can win honestly those six songs i enjoyed all six of them like i was able to sit through all of them i have to admit probably uh, Myra had the least impact on me. I just felt that song was too generic. And Frederick Holland as well. Nice ballad, but again, a bit on the generic side. The other four, though, <laughs> really, really interesting songs. Like, very genuinely interesting. Would all four of those qualify? Maybe. Maybe. I think they're definitely in a conversation to qualify. Um, I just hope all three semis are going to be this quality because if so, I'm going to have like 15 songs to download this year because I'm downloading four of those. Uh, I'm not going to give you a sport about who's my favorite. I'm going to wait until my the end of the video. I'm going to go have my own woman show and then I'll be back for semi-final number two. Let's do a transition. Woo! Okay, and we're back in the room for semi-final number two. I've put a jacket on because it's freaking freezing in <laughs> Ireland right now. Okay, again, we've got six more songs. I have roughly organized them based off of vibes to go slow, fast, slow, fast, etc. I'm definitely saving the robot song to last. <laughs> I have no idea what it is, but it looks so cool. We're starting with Dog Eric Oxford and Anne Fagermo singing Judge Tenderly of Me, which is quite awkward English. Maybe it'll make sense. Maybe Judge Tenderly is a person, <laughs> like Judge Judy, except Norwegian. We're gonna find out in around. 15 seconds once I put my headphones in. Wanna know my secret bang? Ooh, campfire feel. Ooh, it's kind of nice actually. Tickly summer campfire mood. I'm guessing that's your man, Dog Eric. Uh, is it maybe a little bit too calm? It's, this is very lovely. It's very sweet. This is the type of thing Denmark would send, but they send eight of them in a nine song nine final. Mmm. Yeah, very lovely. It's a definite mood. If you like this mood, some people are gonna love this. I think it's gonna be their number one. But I largely think the demographic who will love it are not the people who decide the winner in, in MGP. But I suppose this could qualify, see if the right people tune in. A little bit of a country vibe as well. Okay, Fade of Blue Jeans. Okay, very much a country vibe. Just tenderly on me, that English is very awkward. I think this will probably end up mid-table for me. It's very lovely, but it's just not what I want in my MGP life. Ooh. But that was kind of nice. Dramatic pause. Oh, what the hell? Oh, <laughs> I thought they were gonna go like uns uns there. I take this over a boring ballad because this feels different still, even though it's kind of calm and a little bit low key. It's interesting, low key. Yeah, I can definitely see that qualifying. I think that's gonna have an, a niche audience, and sometimes that's the way to do it. Oh, I was going to make, make a Trump reference there, but let's just avoid that. Okay, next up I put Ellie Christine saying Touch of Venus, because that sounds kind of spicy, so I thought it might be a little bit more upbeat. One and number secret bang. Do you know anything about this lady? Ella Christine, I don't know her. She wrote the song with Ronnie. Ooh. Oh, 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 stop that. <laughs> oh, it's very Bondy, isn't it? It feels like Bond went to the club. Oh, it's a bit too early for the club. Bond's going out dancing. Yeah, it's interesting so far. Definitely a little bit more unusual. I don't know where she's going with this. Oh, she's going full Bond. A touch of Venus. Hmm. I don't know. I really like the concept of this. I don't know if I like the execution. Oh, I like that dip down there. I just don't know if I like the production choices. I feel like the production is a bit um, 
all over the place. This is so many different signs just kind of like squashed together, like quite force, forcefully. She's gonna have to make this make sense to me with her visuals, because right now it doesn't make sense as a song. This rapid singing part, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really feeling that. Mm. It's messy bond. That's what it is. It's messy bond. There's a little bit of a harpsichord coming in, and you know I'm an absolute sucker for a harpsichord. It's really quiet though. What is it with people in quiet harpsichords this year? If she goes full harpsichord, I'm on board. Oh, key change. That's not a full harpsichord. Oh, she's going into proper now. Oh yeah, this is proper messy. It's so good messy, like I'm entertained. I, this is entertaining to me. Oh, it's, oh. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, messy Bond Popper. That's just <laughs> what that was. I enjoyed it. I absolutely, like, I will watch that performance. Absolutely. So, just feel like some of the production choices were off. And then I could hear a good idea in the center. And then it was like, it was like having a pretty model, but then putting loads of weird different types of clothes on her. And then the whole, the whole thing just looks a little bit discombobulated. Okay, next up we have Farida. Now I'm a big fan of Farida. Her song last time was Dangerous. Beautiful ballad. Oh my God, with a fantastic ending. I listened the crap out of that song. I actually messaged Farida this year, asking her to submit a song to the Irish National Final. I kind of went through this deranged phase where I was messaging lots of people and she actually replied to me and she was kind of interested. I don't think she submitted anything in the end because secretly she had heartache in her back pocket and she was saving it for MGP. I'm getting ballad vibes, but let's see what she's got. One and on my secret bang. Okay, that's not a ballad. The dress made me think ballad for some reason. Ooh. Ooh, I'm liking this so far. Reminding me of Aya from Denmark last year. I'm getting that kind of like storytelling country feel. Mmm. Oh yes. And there's some lovely storytelling here as well. I'm intrigued about this her relationship with this boy. Come on, Frida. Um Ooh. That transition was uh um <laughs> I don't know if that worked for me. Okay, let's 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 reset, let's go again. Chorus verses are lovely. I wonder if she's gonna do her half and half hair again this year. I don't know, that transition into beats, it just doesn't fit that storytelling feel that she makes in the verse. Just sounds unusual. Okay, I'm over it, don't worry, I'm over it. Let's just enjoy the song. Is it like, it's like an epic pop or something? She reinventing music here as I speak. Like I'm not not enjoying it, it's just odd. A little bit odd. But she's awesome, I really like her. Mm, I'm just wondering, would this qualify? I think she's gonna have to pull out a strong performance. I don't know. See, he's the heartache of my life. I just don't associate that with uns, 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 uns. So it's just weird juxtaposition. Sonically though, I like it. There's elements I enjoy. And I'm kind of picking up the, the, the tune now, so... Okay, I don't know, that was weird. I don't know how to digest that one. Keep in mind, I'm going to that with slightly high expectations because I really loved her song last time, Dangerous. So maybe if I didn't have any expectations, it would have been different. And also the picture, her red dress made me think ballad. And then I ended up getting a Western storytelling bop into a uns, uns, uns club. So yeah, I just don't... <laughs> <laughs> it's something that happened. I'm not hating it. I'm not loving it either. I'm somewhere in the middle. Uh, let's move on. We've got Milio and they're saying your mind. Do you know anything about Milio? Uh, he's a Norwegian Australian singer, songwriter and recording artist of Asian and Norwegian descent according to Wikipedia. 
one in a secret bank. The song's only 2.30. Mmm. This sounds kind of playful. I'm liking this so far. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, that's naughty. That going down electronic riff. This has got a bit of grit to it, a little bit of edge. It's kind of interesting. A lot of spunk, a lot of sass. He looks like he's got a strong visual identity as well. Because we're getting a school outfit, but it also looks like the Joker. Okay, let's hear the second chorus. We're getting lots of uns unsus here in Norway. This sounds more put together to me. Oh. <gasps> no way! That, those lyrics are so naughty. <gasps> that is, that's very outrageous. He killed his girlfriend? Okay, I'm kind of loving this. This is the edge, edge lord of this here. Very intrigued. This feels like the Frucken und Schnorst. Frucken und Schnorst. From Sweden this year. The kind of like wild card. Yeah. And the song's great as well. It's got a great price to it. It feels like a more serious brother to Queen of Kings. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, bitch. Nice ad libbing. I could have done another 30 seconds of that. That was only 2.35. Okay, I don't I think that's kind of my favorite so far. <laughs> I don't know, it's really hard because you go into some songs with expectations. I had no, exp I, I can be honest, I thought that was a female artist <laughs> going in, like doing maybe like a ballad or something. And then it turned out to be a male artist doing like a very naughty lyrical kind of sincerity bop. What is the name of these bop? these like heartfelt bop songs that Norway does. Are they sincerity bops? What's the word? I don't know. My God, I'm breathless. Okay, I'm downloading so many songs this year. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I would actually download Judge Tenderly of Me. Maybe download Touch of Venus. I'd probably download all four of those. I'm gonna be real with you. Next up, we've got Gote. Gote is a band from Trondelag, Norway, playing Norwegian folk music bred with metal and electronica. Okay, so kind of like Krukorn in Ireland, except maybe more successful. They've got a quite a long Wikipedia page. Oh, they've had number one album. So yeah, they're more established than Crook One. Okay, so I think these guys are the real deal. Is this song called Ulvaham and Wander Wander Wander? Ulvaha means Wolfman. Yes, please. It was really hard to find for some reason. That's so random. Okay, anyway, I found the I found the goddamn song. Okay, uh let's go go ta Ulvaham one and a secret bang. Hmm. Wolf woman. Very intriguing beginning. We know the Televite loves folk songs. Ooh. Oh, that's lovely. That's got a bit of Norse feel. It's got a bit of... It's giving me a bit of Eurovision 90s as well. I love that it's a Norwegian as well. Norwegian's so pretty. Okay, come on, Gorda. Give it to me. Give me a pop drop from heaven. Definitely building up the anticipation here because they've got a, an original sound, a unique sound going into a pop drop. Okay, come on, go play. Ooh. Mm. Oh, pause. Huh? Yeah, it is very much crook on genre, isn't it? Maybe they're mates. Hmm. I definitely think, now obviously I read the description before I went in, but someone watching at home is gonna be like, whoa, what the hell's going on? Folk into rock is like, wah. A little bit of violin fiddle coming in, very pretty. Very unique, very interesting, unique. I'm not hearing like, wow, chorus yet. I do think there's, there's much better variety this year in MGP though. It can become a bit of a pop fest sometimes. Mmm. That pause doesn't work for me. They make an impact and then they stop it and draw back. 
Overall though, super interesting, very unique, gonna stand out an absolute ton. Yeah, there's too many pauses there, I don't get it. It feels like they're breaking their momentum. Unless that's the wolf coming on, doing like a wolf popping or something. <laughs> I can't pop. Okay, the wolf is eating them all now. Ooh, very like mystical now, giving me druid vibes. We've had a lot of witchery this year. It's, it's interesting because a lot of people talk about Kruokorn representing in Ireland. That is, feels very similar, that folk mixed with the national language and then this rock contrast. So having these like more delicate, soft, intimate moments go into like a more modern, rocky, thrashy feel. I think the two bands have that in common. Krugon have a song called The Crow, which I thought would have been brilliant for Eurovision if they put it down to three minutes. Absolutely gorgeous. So I love the idea of these types of songs, but the song has to be good. I don't know if I was hearing like great song there. Now, obviously I was talking, I talk over all my songs. I can still pick out like a really strong hook. A strong hook stops me in my track. Uh, I don't know if I heard that there. I felt that, that the pausing in the chorus felt like a car, you know, when you go out of the wrong gear. It just felt like I lost the momentum and the power of the course dropping. Can they elevate this live? Yeah, I'm in love with the concept 100%. I would love Norway to send something very different because it's been a while since they've sent something non-pop. Now let's go to, oh my God, oh my God, it's happening. Oh bitch, it's happening. If I can find my goddamn playlist. It's my AI. It's by Super Rob, who I'm guessing is the robot and Erika Norwich. The song is written by Erika and Christian Lilian, I don't recognize him, and Lars Horn Lavik, and then Super Rob. So <laughs> some of the songs have been written by the AI. I thought that was not allowed this year. Whatever, no way pushing the limits again. I haven't heard any of this song, but this is the one I've seen the most visual hype for on Twitter. Wanna know my secret bang? Oh, it's... <laughs> Yes, bitch. So Norwegian is like the unciest national final there is. So is Super Rob gonna come in later? <gasps> that's Super Rob. Aw, that's kind of sweet. It's like that uh, Pixar movie, this one. I kind of like the lyrics. <laughs> She's falling in love with AI. Okay, beach. The staging is gonna be crazy. Like the song is messy and, and spop, but the visual story concept is really fun. I kinda like that the robot's pink colored as well. <laughs> Very playful, got a bit of humor, similar to Subwoofer. Like this is gonna get so much attention. If this was to win, people are gonna be talking about this definitely. It's a definite qualifier. And this could be a story outside of Eurovision. Like newspapers would write about this. Some nice hooks in the chorus there as well. Oh wrong. <laughs> Give me a bit of a uh, Barbie girl vibe in the spoken parts. There's a lot of autotune in this. Okay. Yeah, like this would be such a good gym song as well. Yeah, really fun. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm really enjoying it. I don't know, I don't know what to say. Like it's just kind of like wild. Yeah, like that was great. Oh, wait, sorry, my hair got a bit well there. Yeah, that was really fun. I, it made me think a little bit of Subwoofer. The thing with Subwoofer was that was kind of crazy, but then the song was amazing as well. You know, that was my number one in 2021, uh, 2022, sorry. So with that, it was kind of like, I was getting the same like really fun, lighthearted, cheeky vibes. You know, the bit where she's saying, oh, Rob, I'm so ugly. And he's like, no, you're amazing. Showing that kind of Norwegian sense of humor, which I really, really, really enjoy. And just something very different, unique. There's nothing else that's like this. We had robots before with that 
god awful song from San Marino in 2018 or whenever. God, that song just needs to be deleted from life. But this is like representing robots in a positive way. AI is a current topic, so it's topical. It's something that people are interested in talking about now. So this is really clever in that it can drum up a lot of media talk and I think newspapers will want to cover it. If this was to win, I'm not saying it's won, I haven't even heard the last semi-final yet, but if it was to win, this would definitely be a good contender for the televote and it would be the type of song that, you know, the BBC, they always like to pick like the three wackiest songs to talk about when they do their article. This is one of the ones that they talk about. How would it do with the jury? It wouldn't do that well. Like how often do mm's, mm's, robot songs do with the jury. It's not gonna get zero points, but Subwoofer didn't get a ton of points from the jury either. So yeah, I'm interested in this. I think I'll probably download it, but uh, it's not the same feeling as when I had Subwoofer where I also love the actual song. Like even if you stripped away the theme and the lyrics of Subwoofer's song, I still just love that melody and how the song progresses and all that, the vocals, etc. I think if you strip the character away from this, I don't know if I'd love it as much, but the character is a huge part of it. Who do I think will qualify from semifinal number two? So there's the last six songs. I wonder will Farida's name recognition carry her through and she's a good performer as well. I felt like Milio, that really, oh, I really enjoyed that. I don't know what he's like live though. I don't know how experienced he is. He does have a hyperlink, which is good. Ellie Kristen, I don't know, unless she massively makes that, cleans it up and makes the performance make sense. I don't see that going through. And then Judge Tenderly Me, absolutely, totally dependent on the de demographic. If the right people tune in, I can totally see that going in. I presume it's a televote only. There's no info on the wiki page. I presume it's gonna be televote only into the final again, with, like it was last year. Yeah, I think it's, this is gonna be a tough semi. And it's good because I do feel like these two semis are kind of even. I don't feel like this one's super strong, the other one's weak or anything like that. Okay, I'm gonna take another break, download an AI and ask it if I'm ugly or not. <laughs> and then, uh, then I'm gonna to go to semi-final number three. So transition time. And I'm back in the room for part three of my video. We're gonna go through semi-final number three now. I'm ready for six more slices of Norwegian boppery. I'm actually seeing some stuff on Twitter online. Some people are talking about potential wild cards for MGP. This isn't officially announced yet, but people are talking about potentially Rayleigh, Alexander Reback, and someone else potentially being like a wild card announced at each semi final. So, very exciting stuff. Maybe a couple of surprises left to come in MGP. Who knows? Okay, let's start semi final number three. I'm going to leave Kano for last because I know people are going to be waiting for more <laughs> reaction to that. Okay, let's start with Tom. Thomas Jensen and he's saying take me to heaven not take me to your heaven which won in 1999 take me to just general heaven one and number secret bang Ooh, he's got some nice patterning on his nose Ooh, he's given us a little bit of sass yeah I like this this has got a little bit of a uh, energy to it don't recognize his name either I wonder if he's a new act Let's see if a hyperlink. Ooh. Yeah, very fun, quite playful. Thomas. No, I don't recognize any of the songwriters either. Remind me a little bit of Shrelex from last year. Yeah, there's some fellow elements here. It's, there's some generic elements as well, let's be real. But for the generic songs, at least it's got like a light, fun production feel. One thing I say to these songs, a lot of these songs sound really well produced, like the quality of production is exceptional in a lot of them. Vocal sound clean, instrumentation sounds well organized, really high standard. It sounds like it's gonna be a little bit difficult to do this vocally. He's gonna to have to go into a little bit of falsetto. Hmm. Is this a bit messy? Ooh, ho, ho, ho. is he gonna be able to do those vocals? I've had a bop on for most of the song though, in fairness. Hmm, yeah, it's got good construction. It feels like we're building up as we go on. If you can pull off these vocals, that's gonna be a bit of a wow thing, because this is very hard to sing some, um, some parts of it. Hmm, very interested to see now what that's gonna look like in the stage. <laughs> to go back to what I was saying earlier about that wildcard thing, that does fit in with MGP in the past because they have done this thing where they've had automatic qualifiers go straight to the final before. So that wildcard element is possible, plausible. That song was fine. Look, decent quality. 
interested to see can can he perform it live i don't expect a sound like that to win a little bit too unoriginal as a total package okay next up we've got Anne princess and she is levitating oh she's got chains on her hands and she's been broken free and the song is called save me wanna know my secret plan this looks interesting we've got a lot of bops this year a lot of bops i think anything slower different moods gonna stand out Okay, it's another bop. Mmm, <laughs> I do like this beginning. I'm getting that same storytelling feel I got with one of the songs before. Uh, Farida's song, an AF from Denmark last year. Come on, come on, Anne, give us a bop, give us a chorus. Come on, Anne, princess. Little bit more, not like a big oomph into the chorus. Mmm. Yeah, this has got a n bit more of a singer songwriter bop feel. Mmm. Ooh, that's nice production there. Yeah, this has definitely got steam. I feel this has got potential now. Keep going, Anne. That whistle also reminds me of AF from last year as well. Wonder can she bring this storytelling to the stage as well? Maybe something happening on stage. Do we know anything about her? This one's intriguing me, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Anne Princess. Oh, she's writing all by herself as well. That's impressive. She's a bit of a triple threat. Singer, songwriter, hopefully performer. Yeah, this is really fantastic production coming in. I feel like there's a storytelling meaning behind this song. That old children's tale song that she's using. Mm. Okay, hopefully she can finish with a big climax sound. Save Me as well was not a, a name of uh, Victoria's song from Melfest. Yeah, there's something about this. It's like boppy energy, but it's got that serious feel, a little bit of grip behind it. I like it. A couple of ad-libs there I liked. I wanted a little bit more ad-libs. Mmm, really, really nice production. This is a little bit of a dark horse, I think. Because I haven't seen anyone talking about that, but I thought that was good. Really, really hope that she can elevate that in the live performance. And if she does, why, she really is a talent because she's written that herself. Her voice sounds really great. We have to wait for the live vocals. Auto-tune is allowed again this year. And then performance walls. Can she bring that energy? Can she bring a story to the song? Any song that's got a slower, more serious feel is going to stand out because there's a lot of big boppy attention seekers this year which is fantastic i love that energy but there is also an element within national finals of do you stand out are you just lucky that you've turned up to a room with 17 other people and you just happen to be having a different feel to everybody else everyone else okay next up we've got mia with two eyes and she's saying green lights i wonder if that's a reference to her eyes uh mia wanna know my secret bank Ooh, a little bit of organ to start off. Hmm, okay, different feel. More soft, intimate. I think they've split up these three semifinals really well. You can see they've like, they've taken the three slower songs, put one in each, three rock songs, put one in each. Hmm. Okay, very quite standard, pretty classical ballad so far. Again, difficult vocals. Can she pull it off live on stage? Okay, pop drop. Mm, oh God, they just love. <laughs> it's just obsessed with boppy beats in Norway. My God, <laughs> how did a ballad turn into a bop? Crazy. I think everyone was shopping in the bop shop. I just bought a bop while they're at the register. I'm trying to think now, what are the other boppy ballads? Well, we just had Am Princess. I do think she's a this and Am Press in Princess. Am Princess have a little bit of an overlap. Um, Farida kind of fills in the genre as well. Hmm. Oh, that's really nice construction and growth. Really nice production there. I don't know Olivia Rodrigo's music, but this is what I imagine it sounds like. 
there's, an, there's a real vulnerability in this, despite the boppy beats. And definitely in this picture of her as well, she looks super vulnerable. So maybe that's the vibe she's gonna go for. Okay, again, very impressive vocals. sudden endings oh that was jarring okay but largely there were some very interesting things there yeah, I, don't, I didn't like that very sudden ending what did i think of that i thought it was good again mm, unusual because i don't really think of these kind of sincere ballads turning into bops as a genre but there's i can't think of any other ones but we've got three of them so far at least three in this national fast yeah it's like seeing three phoenixes when you haven't seen any phoenixes in the rest of your life okay next up we've got vidar villa now he's actually got a pretty decent following on youtube most of these people seem to have started new accounts and they've got like 10 20 followers this guy's got thirteen thousand, so i think he might already have a bit of a following he looks like a um, newsreader and his song is mer which means more in norwegian one and number secret bank so we're getting a norwegian song okay more norwegian songs is here i think oh giving me boy next door vibes with this sound i'm just an innocent boy i'm just an innocent man <laughs> Ooh, yeah, mm. it's kind of giving me Parish Boy with attitude. Yeah, it's very, it's very twee. It's like Norway's answer to that girl who sat in the chair. What was her name? Leonora. It's Leonora's happy brother from Norway. Yeah, it's a little bit too, it's quite childlike for me. I think it's too childish for my taste. But if he's got a following, I think you could put God lyrics on this, like I love God, and it would fit seamlessly. It's giving me a bit of that, like, upbeat Christian pop. It's well, it's well done, well produced. I think it's been pretty low down in my list, so it's not really moving me. I don't feel inspired. No, it, this sounds really, it sounds quite cliche to me. It feels like it's targeted towards children and 70 plus. Um, I'm really ragging up, sorry, <laughs> but yeah, I, it's just like, that's fine. I can't like everything. I'm sure other people will like this. Like, it's got a bop to it. Like, I'm kind of bopping around. I just, I don't want to listen to it again afterwards, that's all. Your villa mayor. I want more. I wanted more as well, but I didn't get it. Never mind. You can't like, like oh, I'm not going to complain. Bloody hell. I'm like 16 songs in and I've got so many downloads. So overall, I'm doing very well in obtaining new slices of Norwegian boppery poppery. Let's go to the next person, obviously. And we've got a very different tone. We're going to the Waltz of Death, which I'm guessing is probably also going to be an upbeat bop song. And this is by Mistra, one and my secret band. Hopefully now we get something that's a little bit more serious and stays serious for the entire three minutes. Ooh. Ooh, she's not happy. Who hurt you, Mistra? Oh, give me a bit of Baccarat spoken word realness. I guess since she's into tarot cards. Ooh. I get, oh, ooh. That looks like one of the guys from, um, what was it, Nord Minister? Who are the guys in the first? Oh, Goth Minister. Again, a different feel. This is reminding me a little bit of that girl from Semi 2, uh, Ailey Kristen. Ooh. Okay, a Rocky vibe. So each semi final has one Rocky vibe. Giving me Transylvania angst. I love the intensity in her eyes. She's got some good acting skills on her. I hope she gives us like very melodramatic telenovela angst on stage song wise i think it's fine i think it's interesting because it stands out it's a little bit different i'm not hearing a winner in it yeah the lyrics are very melodramatic yeah what's a death <laughs> it's i hope she goes full camp in this like Full on dying on the stage with like a big white robe on or something, just like go all in. She's giving me a couple of Kate Bush vibes as well. 
I think she should bring that guitar song with her. Uh, this feels a little bit like it's losing energy as opposed to bringing drama at the end. Oh, is that over? Nope. But definitely a really unique viewpoint. Super interesting. Mm. Yeah, look, that's just... it. I thought that was interesting. I don't know if it's like totally my cup of tea, but I like that it's going to be somebody's cup of tea because it's got flavour. I like that it's bringing something that feels a little bit fresh and different. Even if that fresh sound sounds kind of nostalgic, it's still fresh. So interesting one. I'd be very keen to see how that does. Again, someone who doesn't have a huge amount of subscribers on YouTube, so I'm not really sure what her base is that she's pulling from. I think we're on her last song, and it is... Kaino saying damn diggy da. So obviously Kaino have, I think they've entered MGP twice, maybe more than that. I did a reaction to their song in 2019. I thought Spirit in the Sky was great. I really liked it. It was my favorite and I wanted it to win. I also did a reaction to Monument in 21 maybe. I didn't like that. I think it's my most thumbed down video <laughs> ever. It's one of my most, my most thumbed down video ever is my top. <laughs> in terms of like shorter reaction videos, my most thumbed down video ever is my reaction to Monument. I actually watched that back recently. I don't even say I hate it that much. I just don't like it. And that's terrible. <laughs> so all the kind of stands came after me. So yeah, let's see how this goes. I have seen people saying that they love this on Twitter. I've been people saying that they think it's absolute crap. The title is Dam Digi Da. Wanna know my secret pack? What the hell are we gonna get? Okay. Mm, okay, that's a start. Ooh, very Transylvania like. A lot of people giving me Halloween vibes this year. It sounds very polarizing already. I think some people are really not gonna like this. Diggy Dam Dam. Okay, is that Tom coming in? Is Fred gonna do a yoik in this? It's gonna sound weird. Very much like Naughty's Transylvania dance pop. Okay, I feel like we're gonna get a pop drop here. Ooh, is that Fred? That sounds <laughs> Uh, what do I think about that? It's, 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 it, it's something. <laughs> it's something that's happening to me. I don't dislike it. I don't love it or dislike it. I think I'm gonna be uh, Switzerland in terms of this song. We're going down diggy down the dance floor. Like, this isn't giving me the same Spirit in the Sky winner vibes that I got in 2019. This, it, <laughs> this sounds, look, let's be real, it sounds a bit trashy. Which, which can be good. I don't know though. <laughs> I don't know if it's for me. Okay, bit of a breakdown, why not? What are Fred and Tom gonna be doing for this song? Are they just standing there doing like this or something? It's just Alexander on her own. Okay. Oh, I like this bit a bit more. The Diggy Dom just sounds a bit Cotton Eye Joe. Ooh. Okay. I'm kind of on board. I don't know if I download this though. I think I watch the performance and be entertained, but I don't want to listen to it. I feel like they're the kings and queens of messiness. Like we've had some messy songs and they win the messy songs. Like they, they, they're very enjoyable elements to this. But like their problem in 2019 was they won the televote and they didn't win the jury. They didn't win the jury. There is no way in a million years that that is gonna do anything more with the jury. It would do way worse. It could potentially do well with the televote. So yeah, I think I'm probably in the middle. I've seen people saying like, this is the worst song ever and this is brilliant on Twitter. I'm probably somewhere in the middle. I enjoy some elements of it. I don't know if I'd download that though. It doesn't strike me as something that I'd wanna to listen to. It felt a little bit too busy. I don't know if it might stress me out. But who knows, a lot of these songs you can listen to them and then you don't like them originally and then they grow on you. Okay, let's make my list for now. And then when I edit, I will update 
with a voiceover and give you my final top 10s. This is my first attempt at a top 18. Now I'm definitely not getting this tattooed anywhere on my body because this is definitely gonna change. But I'm just kind of going by what I remember feeling the first time I listened to it. Was I surprised? Was I excited? Was I waiting for the end? Did it catch me off guard in any way? So huge variety here. Oh my God, like really, really rock songs, a lot of bops so many freaking bops we had some slower songs we had some folk songs we had some classic pop we had some dark pop we had a little bit of naughty pop with milio so at this point in time i'm saying my top three and number three i'm saying super rob and erica norway i just love the playfulness and humor in that second place i'm putting margaret burger now i'm not saying that i think that this is better than I Feed You My Love, but I still really enjoy her electronic sound. And I'm curious to see what her performance is gonna be. And then Miley Oat first. I don't know why, maybe it was just because I was surprised because I went in not expecting anything. But at this point in time, before editing, he is my number one. Oh, also, who would I think is qualifying from semi-final number three? I would imagine Kaino just based on their, their fan base. Maybe one of me and Am Princess. I feel like there's a bit of an overlap there. I do feel like that third semi-final for me is the weakest. I think I'm gonna have the fewest downloads there and I don't really see anybody there winning. So I feel like semi-final three is open. Whoever brings the best staging basically. Now I'm gonna do a voiceover of my post-editing top 10. I did move kind of up into my ninth place because I actually think the song is kind of fun. And actually that ends up being my number one ranked song from semi-final number three. So definitely in my opinion, I think the third semi-final is much weaker than the other two. And I moved Margaret down a couple of places down to fourth. So I have a new one in my top three and that is Ingrid Yasmin. But otherwise no massive changes in my top 18. And now we're gonna look at the community, so. Okay, so, oh my God, Kaino's number one. I'm gonna get absolutely eviscerated for putting them solo, whatever. Like, if you don't wanna see people's opinions, then don't watch opinion videos. Yeah, that just didn't work for me. I, I like that it's kind of like fun and different and Halloween-y. It could grow on me, who knows, but I'm getting kind of like slightly cheap, goofy vibes in the production, but definitely fun, it's goofy fun. So, you know, that's better than just goofy with no fun. Last place, we've Dog Eric Oxford. Oh, that's the campfire song. Again, I think this demographic on your vision scoreboard isn't gonna appreciate it, but if another demographic comes in and watch, it could do okay. Mistra, I think that's the Waltz of Death Girl. Thomas Jensen is the guy with the nose studs. Myra was the rapper who wasn't a rapper. Ellie Kristin was uh, Messy Bond. Vitter Villa was the Christian pop song. Frederick Holland was the that was probably like the most standard ballad song, like very basic ballad boy. I was gonna say bitch, but I didn't. Anne Princess was the girl who uh, is the one woman show, doing everything herself. Mathilde and Chris is the woman show, not the one woman show, just the woman show. That was kind of fun. I thought that was upbeat. I remembered that song. I think it will stand out. Goth Minister was the rock song, had a really cool vibe, but I just felt didn't have the umphy course I wanted it to. Super Rob and Erica in eighth, okay, I thought that would be higher. I thought that the fandom would kind of really go crazy for that because it's fun, it's a little bit out there. Gote are in seventh. Apparently they are really popular with the Norwegian base so far, but if you're Norwegian, tell me what you like, what are your Norwegian friends and family enjoying because that could give us an idea about the televote. Okay, in sixth place we have Farida. Okay, so more people enjoying Farida. I have to admit, I enjoy Dangerous a lot more. This could grow on me though. I think always when you have a song that you were very much in love with before and you've listened to 50, 60 times, it's difficult to come into the new song because you have to make a transition in expectations and sound. So maybe I just need a little bit more time with Farida, but I really like her as an artist. Milio in fifth. Okay, I'm kind of happy to see that. Will Milio have still be my number one? You know the answer, I don't. Ingrid Yasmin in fourth. Okay, that's interesting as well. I thought that was the folky one who was a little bit unusual. I wasn't sure if other people would get that. Mia in third. Oh, that's interesting. So the one who I thought sounded like what I think Olivia Rodrigo sounds like. She's in third. Margaret Berger in second. And then Kaino in first. If the community had it their way, Kaino would be going to Eurovision. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm fine if they went. I don't think it's the best song. I would probably wouldn't even put it in my top five. But uh, maybe, again, we might have those three songs uh, if it's true that we have some wild cards, that would be really fun to add that into the mix. 
But I think that Norway's got some interesting options there. I don't see any of those songs winning the contest. I think there's a large amount of them that will qualify. Norway have an absolutely unbelievably good qualification record. Plus, we haven't even seen any staging elevation yet either. So, But they need to be looking who's got the funnest song, who can get them at another top 10. They've been in the top 10 eight of the last 10 years, I think. So they want to keep up that streak, pushing towards a win. Uh, no one's giving me winner vibes. Overall, I really enjoyed this. So many downloads. MGP, amazing national final. I really enjoy watching it. I will be hopefully live streaming all three of the semifinals. I need to get my live streaming software skills up to date before I do that. Okay, that's what I thought. What do you think about MGP? Definitely leave me a comment in the comment section down below. At the point of filming, I have no new donations on Buy Me Coffee or PayPal, but if you do want to donate to the channel, I'll leave a link for you in the description down below. And also a massive thank you to all of my Patreons for patronizing me from all over the world. I put the original audio versions of my reactions up there. I do a couple of bonus videos. You can be part of our My Eurovision Scoreboard group as well. So check that out if you're a fan of the channel. But as always, thank you so much just for watching. And I hope to see you in another Eurovision reaction video very soon. What's happening? Why can't I do my outros? Well, it's the end. Thank <laughs> you.